All I can say is Mr. Sierra, man, he better win a ball game. And, you know, I think Mr. Pfizer's going to have his hands full up there in Minnesota, too. That's going to be an interesting one. Yes, and I did take that from, from Aaron Rodgers, as Aaron Rodgers is dubbed Travis Kelsey, Mr. Pfizer now. I actually like the name. <laughs> Not that I'm making any political statements here or anything. Let's bring my friend in. The legend himself. The much anticipated. Our friend, Philly Godfather. He rolls in here on a Friday, as he always does. How you doing, brother? Big Dan. What's going on, man? Everything's good. I, I can't complain. I lead a charmed life. <laughs> <laughs> See, the, when you have a shit-eating smile like that, it that aggravates. People don't like people who... Who who like who are punchers, man? And they they get a little angry when people smile like that, man. They think you're having too good a time, and you know our country, man. I Shit, know. man. If you have a, if you have a lot of money and you're having a good time, they try to take it away from you. But it's the glacier effect, right? They don't see everything you've been through on the bottom to get to the top. You know all the trials and tribulations, all the highs and lows. You know it, it's it's a journey. You know. All right, man. Before we get into football. What's the odds that Trump becomes House of Representatives? <laughs> <laughs> I want an over-under on it. <laughs> the, the, pro the problem is there's a lot of Republicans that don't like him as Democrats. And uh, that's the big issue here. Uh, I don't think it happens. I would bet to no, know, whatever the number is. But we're living in crazy times, man. You never know. Dan. You never know. The only guy that would have an ankle bracelet on making decisions on whether or not to impeach <laughs> Biden. Dude, I'm not, I don't really care either way either. I'm more of a guy with content. I would just sit there with popcorn all day long and I don't know. <laughs> Me too. It, it, I mean, that would, that would fill my time. Let's get into the games. By the way, um, is it, a, is it a two team race now in the NFC East after what you've seen with the first month of the season with Washington and New York, the way they're playing? Oh, the NFC East. Yeah. I yeah. So. I mean, the Giants are so bad that I wouldn't bet on that team with counterfeit money. Like that's how bad that team is. They're hard. They got major issues. Last year, the ball bounced the right way for them. Everyone thought Dable was a genius. This year, nothing's going right. Uh, the Commanders, you saw them last night. I actually was on the Bears last night, plus six, and on the money line after losing 14 straight. This Commanders team, uh, they have some issues. The fact that Riverboat ran. Ron, Ron isn't a gambler no more, and he didn't go for that two point conversion against the birds. And he chose to tie it up and give the Eagles the ball. That, that you got to wash your hands with that team, you know. So, you think that Magic Johnson get this? So, a minority stakeholder in a football team's got a megahorn and he's barking that he didn't think the team played hard. To me, that sounds like a guy that really has the big bag of money going. Hey, once you send that out there, that Eric Bieniemy in a couple of weeks here is going to take the reins, and he's going to be the permanent head coach, and they're going to go forward with that because, dude, I have you ever heard a minority stakeholder in a team saying, "I think my team had no heart." No, I mean they play. This they play hard. They came back, uh, but they can't stop a nosebleed on defense. That that defensive pass rush is strong, but the rest of that defense is just bad. All right, let's get to the games here on Sunday. Jags at Buffalo. Um, Buffalo's playing some really good ball. Jags have been kind of a disappointment the first month of the season. What do you see here? I mean, the Jags have been out there for a couple of weeks. They're going over to London. I think the Bills are jumping on the plane tonight. So that plays a role. Uh, the line got as high as minus six. And I actually took the Jags plus six here. There's some sharp money on the Jags as well. Uh, the only thing that worries me a little bit is it's kind of a sandwich spot for the Jags. I think they play the Colts the following week, divisional game. But – Last time I checked, I talked to guys out in Vegas and Costa Rica and Atlantic City, the bookmakers. And as of right now, 90% of the actions on Buffalo after beating down Miami like they did the previous week. So the betting public is going to be all over them. I wouldn't be surprised if this is a real close game. And I see the Bills winning, but maybe by a field goal or four or five points. How about this? Godfather, do, do you think those London games are weird? Yeah. And how because of the travel and all that, you just don't know how a team travels and – which team's going to show up sharp and which team doesn't. It just seems like a weird game always. Yeah, it, it is. It's, it's so hard to quantify what goes on with all that travel. And uh, the food's bad over there, like we talked about last week. And the other thing is the weather. It's usually raining, usually windy. So you'll see a lot of games stay under the total. This week, it looks like the weather's 
fine, but they are expecting wind gusts anywhere from 20 to 30 miles an hour. So that could affect the passing game for the Buffalo Bills, who uh, the previous week, looked, they were on fire. And I would always just put a little asterisk to the side of that, that I don't give a shit about the queen or the king either. <laughs> Let's move on to Baltimore. I'm American, man. Baltimore, Pittsburgh. How do you see this thing play out? This game's been going back and forth from four and a half down to three and a half, back to four and a half. I don't know who's playing for the Ravens come game day, so you got to really pay attention to the injury reports because they're really banged up. If they get a little healthier, uh, that Pittsburgh's offense, it's one of the worst in the NFL. I mean, they struggle on third down. They struggle in the red zone. You know, it's always hard you know, chasing Lamar Jackson around. Um, as of right now, it's kind of a dead number. It's back to four, four and a half. I'm not looking to bet the game. If anything, maybe I'll look to go under the total, depending on who's playing and who's not playing in this game. Carolina at Detroit. Um, it's a very, very under underwhelming offensive line in Carolina. I don't know what and where they're going this year with it. They have not been able to get Miles Sanders going. Detroit, I'll tell you what, man, on their resume, there's some pretty good victories on that resume yeah. that they have right now. It's sitting at three and one. And I think, and I said this before too, Godfather, I think they're one of the teams like with Dallas that look is looking up at the bullies in the NFC, and that's San Francisco and Philadelphia. And I think these are one of those teams that are trying to get into that party. Do you think – are you buying Detroit? Yeah, they're not scared. This team ain't scared of nobody in the NFC. They're 3-1 and with a plus 43-point differential on the season. And if you look at their common opponents, they've had the toughest schedule in the NFC, I think in the NFL this year. I think they've played teams that are 10-6 and six straight up, while – uh, the 49ers have played teams with a combined record of six and ten. The Eagles seven and nine. The Cowboys have played teams with a combined record of four and twelve. So they've had a tough route, and they're right there. And the only game they lost, they came in that game limping. They were banged up. This is a team that's not scared of anybody, and probably, they're going to make the playoffs, and they're going to make some noise this year. I one of my bold predictions, if you remember right, I said that Daniel Jones will be benched. For Tyrod Taylor, <laughs> if the Giants lose to Miami and they put a 50 on the season, I mean, are you just going to run through the tape? Because eventually you got to start making – or, or hey, and by the way, too, I say this about Barkley. I think he's sandbagging. I, why in the world would you come back to that knowing full well that you're going to have another year on you playing behind a crappy offensive line knowing they want to trade you, and if you play and don't produce, you're going to have lesser money being offered to you in February or March. Yeah, I mean, why would you play? As bad as that offensive line is, I think they're missing three starters this week. Going to yeah, Miami. why would you play? They're, they're in trouble. They're limping. And Miami's upset. I was going to say pissed off, but they're really upset losing last week the way they did to, to Buffalo. So – you might see a beat down here. The line's 12, 12 and a half. It keeps going up. It's probably going to close like 14 by game time. I laid six and a half on Miami in the first half and seven. Uh, you can probably still find some sevens out there. I think they come out on fire, upset. And this Giants team is in trouble, man. They're in trouble. Tennessee at Indy. Who would have ever thought I'm sitting here going, could Indianapolis go to three and two on the season this year with Shane Steichen in his first year <laughs> coaching? I mean, dude, you know, for the hey, for the offense to be wobbling in the passing game as much as it has been, and this guy could potentially be three and two with Jim Irsay. Yeah. I mean, it's quite a job. I actually liked him over Tennessee. Well, they opened up a one and a half point favorite, and now it's flip flop. Tennessee's up to two and a half. Huh. If, it, if it gets to three, I'll be looking to take the home dog Colts here. I mean, Richardson has played out out real this year. He's he's got a three to one touchdown interception ratio. When it comes to explosive runs and explosive passes in the NFL. And Tennessee has one of the worst uh pass defenses in the league. I think they're ranked like 29th in opponent yards per pass attempt. So if it gets to three, I think there's some value here on the Colts at plus three. How do you stop that kid? You saw him against – they came back. They were getting killed. They came back. They put it into overtime the previous week, and they had a chance to win. It's hard to stop uh, Richardson. Cincinnati out with the Arizona Gannons. Who do you like here? I I, I think this is a tricky game here. Yeah, it is. I mean, the line's trapped. I think it's down to three. I'm looking on Wow. The yeah, I mean, really? 
It opened six. You've seen three even money, three minus 05. So that's a, a, a clear indicator that there's some money behind Arizona. And they, San Arizona team could be three or one on the season. They even played the 49ers tough. Uh, it's a dangerous team. It's going to take a lot, a big effort from Cincinnati to win on the road this week. I don't know if they have it in them. I don't know if Joe Burrow is healthy enough. I'm not, I'm not looking to invest on either team, but if I had to, gun to my head, I'll probably take the dog here, plus three, the home dog. Wow. Kansas City and Mr. Pfizer go up to Minneapolis <laughs> and take on the Minnesota Vikings. Okay. And the Taylor Swifties. Um, <laughs> hey, hey, before we go on, did you hear this? Get this, man. So – they want this chick so bad to be like a halftime <laughs> singer. You know what they're doing? They're doing this. Hey, I know you got a movie coming out, and Sunday Night Football will give you as much advertising spots as you want for free to wow. advertise your movie, and it's 1.5 a clip for every 30. And, do, and like this, they charge the Pentagon for hometown hero campaigns, and even women with breast cancer, those, those pink shirts, they send a bill to that organization wow. every year. The NFL doesn't give shit away for free. That it's just a, shows. Hey, and I said I, I think the NFL and these old dirty men want to date Tyler Swift more than <laughs> than than Travis Kelsey does. I mean, I mean, <laughs> she's got an impact on this stuff, man. When it comes to viewership, I mean, the old adage is the rich get everything for free. I mean, what's she worth? Seven hundred million? I don't even know what the girl's worth. And no, she's worth almost a billion now. Yeah, it's crazy. She's thirty three years old, and they're giving her free commercial time. So it's Sunday Night Football. I don't know. I mean, the game. This game opened up five and a half. It's down to three and a half. There's some sharp money on Minnesota. Uh, Minnesota's been moving the ball. They're you know top five, top ten in yards for play on offense. Their biggest problem is I think they have like a negative eight uh, turnover differential on the season. If they don't turn the ball over, they can hang around at the current number of three and a half. I'm not really sold on it. If it was closer to five, five and a half at the opening number, I probably look. I would have probably looked to nibble on them, but uh, I'm not touching this game. Okay, look, it's the revenge bowl here, and it's the New York Jets versus Mr. Sierra and the Denver Broncos. <laughs> and I'm trying to figure out, you know, I mean, you know, it, it's got to be now or never for Mr. Sierra. Doesn't it have to be? The Broncos have to win. What? I, I mean, man, you know, my father growing up he used to tell me the three most dangerous things on the planet are water, fire, and women. <laughs> and it looks like it's true when it comes to Russell Wilson. Everything he, ever since he, you know, got with her, it seems like everything's going downhill. He fell off a cliff. The, the team, he's a movie star now. Yeah, he's a prima donna. I don't think his team likes him, to tell you the truth. I mean, you're hearing whispers and rumors about the locker room of not liking Russell Wilson. Um, I, I don't know. It, the Jets with that defense on the road, I'd like to take three on them. I think they can beat Denver. See, and you hear Marshawn Lynch. So <laughs> this is all you need to know. So he needed the number for Mr. Sierra to ask him something and start talking to Russell Wilson. And so they're – and, like, he goes, yeah, yeah. So Russell got wind that he wanted to talk. He calls him from a blocked phone number. <laughs> I mean, he's your teammate, and he calls you from a blocked phone number like – isn't that Carson Wentz shit? That's yeah. That's that that you know. You know, my buddy wrote that article about Wentz, Joe San Laquita, that went viral, and we were talking about that whole thing. And he kept asking me, Steve, should I put it out there before you even put it out there? I'm like, Joe, it's 100 percent true. It's 100 percent accurate. Put it out there. You know, it, it, that's what you do. You're a writer, and it does remind me a lot of Carson Wentz. He thinks he's better than everybody. He thinks he's up here, and other guys are down here. And as you know, in the locker room, that, that that don't fly, man. We're all out there. It's a war every week. Everyone's got to pull together to win games. I mean, you know, on any given Sunday, any team can beat you. So if you're not cohesive as a team and you're not together, it's a major issue. I mean, you could make the argument that when Pete Carroll had him in Seattle, like, you know, remember how they won? They he, they didn't. You, you know what, and I said this earlier, it kind of reminds me a little bit of Hurts and how they're making him get down and not run the ball as much as he did a year ago, and they're giving those carries to Kenny Gainwell, and they want him to throw more from the pocket. Well, what happened in Seattle? Well, after Marshawn Lynch left and the Legion of Boom started fading and they had to have him throw the ball, 
they won less important games. They still won games, Godfather. Like they still won division titles. But when it came to being a Super Bowl contender, so to speak, they never were ever again. So in the process of the quarterback, and I think it's more the quarterback changing his game, he changed his game to a point where he won lesser big games. Yeah. And And I I have a fear with that with Hurts with what they're saying to him on him being conservative and not letting him run the ball like he has in the past. Money changes everything. You know that, Dan. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, sir. You get those big checks, you get fat. You don't want to run as much. You don't want to, you know, get hurt. You know, so do you think it's him or do you think it's the organization or both? I think mean, it's a combination of both. They want to try and keep him healthy. They want him to last as long as possible. You know, running quarterbacks, they don't last long in this league if they keep running the ball. So, um, yeah, it's a combination of both. Hey, yeah, man, you know, I don't want to get my toe stubbed. And, you know, I got a pedicure that's coming up next week, and I got to make sure I play good this week here. So, yeah, that's why I'm sliding. I hate my toenails chipped. <laughs> when you hear a man say that, you know it's time to move on from that quarterback. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my hey, God. Hey, no, dude, no, hey, I, 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 there's two things that I have a problem with, man. I don't go to bars with dudes, and if a guy's got his toenails painted, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I've never, I've never been around. I'm, with, I, I, I'm not asking. Hey, I'm not asking you to commentary on that one. That's not a commentary. All right, here it is. Cowboys, 49ers. How do you see this bad puppy? You know that pickup of Trey Lance might have been a good idea. You know, he might know a little bit extra that most people don't know about Shanahan. But Dan Quinn knows Shanahan like the back of his hand, right? So, and he's kind of owned him over the years. So there's no scheme that Shanahan's going to come up with, you know, on offense or defense or whatever they're going to do that's going to uh, trick the Cowboys. Uh, 49ers metrics offensively, they look great on paper. I mean, number two in yards per play. But if you look at the defenses they've played, some of the worst in the NFL. So they're a little skewed. Their numbers are a little skewed. Um, Cowboys need this game. They're coming in this game a little healthier. I think the Cowboys are plus three and a half. You got the Cowboys on this thing? Yeah, plus three and a half. Okay, so how big a game is this for Brock Purdy and Dak Prescott? It's big, and this is the toughest defense Purdy's going to play all season. Like I said, they, they played a bunch of bad defenses, and he's looked pretty good. But, you know, the Cowboys defense is what? They're ranked number one in, in opponent uh, points per game, seventh in opponent yards per play, second in opponent yards per game. This is the toughest, and they are a little banged up, but they're still pretty strong. So we're going to know after this game how good Brock Purdy really is. And if the 49ers are the beast of the NFC, put it that way. Do you agree that this is Dak Prescott's biggest game of his career? Um, to this point. I think that'll come into playoffs this year. But he can't suffer any more brain cramps like he did against Arizona, throwing picks in a triple coverage. I mean, if you see him out there and he's, uh, you know, he's not playing at an optimum level, Moving forward, that Cowboys organization is going to have to come to the realization that maybe he can't get you there. But I think he has a big game here. I think he has a big game. Did you give us a score in the Rams game? Um, I kind of like the Rams a little bit. You got a Super Bowl winning coach, Super Bowl winning quarterback. You got an Eagles pass defense that's ranked 16th or 17th in opponent No, no, no. Pass defense is 27th. No, in opponent yards per pass attempt. Okay. Not overall. Okay. Yeah, I look at some different metrics. Okay. Uh, that are a little bit of a clearer indicator for me uh, than the vanilla ones out there. But uh, you got a team that can move the ball. You got a defense that's pretty strong. Um, I took plus five, plus five and a half on the Rams. Look ahead line was Eagles minus five. It went up to as high as minus six and a half. And now it's back down to four, probably close three and a half by game time. This is probably the best team the Eagles have faced this season. Uh, if they impose their will with that offensive line again, well, then, you know, the Eagles do what they got to do to win. But I think it's going to be a close game. I think it's a field goal game. Here's here's what I said about the metrics in this game. you got the second-best passing attack in the NFL and the Rams. This will be the best quarterback you've played since the Super Bowl. Your secondary is one of the – maybe the fifth worst in the league. Yeah. And you're going against – now, Cup is also being active. Yeah. And he's being activated – which gives them another option, which means that now you're going to have to have your defensive front and you don't have Fletcher Cox in there now pushing the pocket as a rotation piece. And how about this one? 
you know, I'm with all that to say, then you got Sue Peta, Opeta, who's got a lineup against Aaron Donald, yeah. who's a backup. So now we're talking about two different dynamics in a game going in. Now, the Eagles have the elite roster, but there's points in this game where you see an advantage for the Rams in this game, and it's against some of the Eagle weaknesses. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, the Rams quarterback, he's solid. I mean, I, th he's, I think he's better than uh, Jalen Hurts. And like you said, that that pressure from that Rams defensive line, it's going to cause uh, some problems for her. Did Hurts. you see Matthew Stafford's better than Jalen Hurts? Yeah, of course he is. What do you mean? It's not even a question. The guy, <laughs> it's not even a question. Now, he played on those bad Detroit Lions teams for years. I mean, uh, the, the guy's – he's he, he can he can throw the ball. And like I said, that pressure from that Rams defensive line, it's going to cause Hurts to roll out more. I think Hurts has more rushing yards this week. I bet he's over in his rushing yards at 39 and a half. If that's a prop you guys were looking to bet, uh, I think he might have a scoring touchdown because they're going. He's going to have to use his legs to beat this team. I don't think he can beat him with his arm. Hurts. See, personally, Jalen Hurts will never throw for forty-seven thousand yards in his entire career. At most, he'll be lucky to get somewhere near McNabb's thirty-six McNabb. if he plays that long. I don't think like being McNabb. compared to Donovan McNabb. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think he's as good as McNabb. I mean, I love I love Hurts. I love his work ethic. I love his intensity. I mean, he's a football player, right? He's strong, you know. But, you know, when it comes to beating you with his arm, I don't think he's that guy. Are you buying the Raiders and Packers on Monday night, or is that just a throwaway game to you? I didn't bet it. There's some sharp money on the Raiders. Uh, the line's up to one and a half. It's probably going to close two, two and a half. I don't think it gets to three, because if it gets to three, you'll see some resistance in the market, and you'll see uh, some sharp money come back at plus three. But uh, I can't bet on either one of those teams. I mean, uh, Green Bay's banged up. The Raiders and their coach, maybe the worst coach in the NFL. I mean, you think of some of the brain cramps he's had over the years. Jesus. Uh, yeah, I'm not looking about that game. October 6th. Stafford, better than Hurts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm writing that down. Hey, just a few college games. Red River rivalry. I'm sorry. I'm not politically correct. I don't give a shit about that stuff. One of the greatest rivalries of all time at the Cotton Bowl. Um, OU comes into that. I don't believe they have a loss in Texas. For the first time, I may actually say this: this may be the best Texas team that I've seen since Mac Brown. Wow, that's a big statement. You probably yeah. Won't. Well, I don't really say that about them because two years ago they had fifty-three five-star guys on that team, and they lost to Kansas. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they probably have the most impressive win of any college football team this yes. season going into Tuscaloosa, winning at seven-point underdogs. So this team's for real. Uh, but Oklahoma, I mean, you look at their point differential, they're just scorching teams. I mean, they're beating teams. They're, uh, you know, uh, it's a five-point spread. The bookmakers have been wrong about Oklahoma all year. They're 5-0 and against the spread. Like, you know, so this number might be off. I don't see Texas losing, but covering the spread, it's a, it's a different story. It's all about the price. Uh Man, if if Oklahoma wins this game, what happens next? It, it changes the whole dynamic. Of, oh of yeah, everything. yeah. If OU you know. if OU were to upset Texas, wow, I would say that FSU has the most impressive wins. If you think LSU is still a big win, and with Clemson, depending on what they do this weekend at homecoming, FSU. Because quite frankly, I said this the other day to a top twenty-five voter. I mean, I don't know why people are looking at Michigan. I mean, they've played Eagle Creek University, Helen Keller University, <laughs> Siskawa University. I don't know who they've played. And to sit there and have me go, well, they're one of the best teams in the country. How do I know that? Well, I mean, you, you have to play somebody. Yeah, you know what I do, Dan? I go through the box score, and I always look for clean victories, games that you didn't win because the other team turned the ball over three times. And then I add the fact that if a team outperforms the market, covers the spread each and every week, well, then they're better than bookmakers think. And they're winning clean games. They're not being gifted games like when the Vikings gave that game to the Eagles with four turnovers and one right before halftime. So that's how I kind of try to gauge these teams. And you can only play the teams that are, are in front of you. Uh, the test for Michigan obviously is going to be at Happy Valley when they play Penn State and then Ohio State. I don't think Ohio State's as good as uh, you know they were expected to be. Penn State might be a little better. So uh, you know they're going to have an easier path to get to the college football playoff. I took Michigan at the beginning of the year. Not I don't bet on teams. I bet on price. I got nine to one on that team. I'm expecting them to make the playoffs, and then I can always hedge the other way. 
but Texas, like you said, they might be the best team in the country, and they should cover that at five point spread against Oklahoma. You watch how many of those Texas teams, Godfather, start turning out to be top five teams because of nil <laughs> and all them oil guys. Do you remember <laughs> what did the, what did Johnny Manziel used to do that? <laughs> hey man, do you remember back in the day when SMU got put on the on the uh, death Flight penalty? Yeah. Well, what was going on then? Arkansas was paying big money. They were. When's the last time Arkansas was good? Well, when they were in the Southwest Conference and they were ineligible because they were paying players. OU was in that thing. Nebraska was in that thing. They were paying all those people, Big 8, Southwest Conference, all those conferences were spending a ton of money. That went away. Now it's coming back. You watch those Texas programs. That's why the guy at Alabama's upset and the guy at Clemson's upset because you're seeing Texas go to – you know, Arch Manning right now makes $6 million a year, and he's the third-team guy wow. on the Longhorn roster. He's wow. the third-team quarterback. Wow. And he makes $6 million bucks a year. Well, the kid from USC said he can make more money in college football next year, making $10 million a year than in the NFL. You know, back then, I always wondered who owned those companies that made those double wides because they were getting rich back then. <laughs> Absolutely. Last question for you. You know, Arizona State is always a funny – is always a funny place to go and play. And this is the first time Colorado in the last couple of weeks has been favored going into a game. Yeah. Um, Dion sitting at three and two. They win this ball game. They'll be four and two. Hey, here's my prediction. You watch this. They may win only seven games this year, right? But I guarantee you, guarantee you, they go to a game like the Holiday Bowl or they go to the Gator Bowl because you know why? Those bowl games aren't concerned about who the best teams are. Yeah. They're more concerned about who brings the ratings, the <laughs> revenue, the exposure, and the movie stars. Yeah. They're going to go to a bigger game than they deserve. Mark my words on that. Well, as of right now, I think they're adjusting regular season win totals at five and a half. And this is going to be a tough game. game lined up in the five. Yeah. It's moving against Colorado. It's down to three and a half. You're probably going to see this game close three. And there's some reverse line movement, which should scare anyone looking to bet Colorado here. Uh, about 75% of the action, early action is on Colorado. And come game time, it's probably going to be closer to 85, 90. So the betting public's all over Colorado here. The line's going the other way. That's never a good uh, predictive indicator of how this game's going to turn out. I got you, man. I think that's going to be a tough putt there, man. Tell folks how they can find all your stuff, my friend. Yeah, you can find me on Twitter at Philly Godfather. You can stop by my website, thephillygodfather.com. And we got that show that you were on. We're going to have you back on in a couple of weeks. The sports betting show on Sirius XM, Sports Grid, and Jacob Sports Media. Never bet on Mr. Sierra or Mr. Pfizer. <laughs> just, just throwing that out. Hey, have a great one, brother. We'll see you next Friday. You too. Got, you got it, man. That's our good friend, the Philly Godfather. Hit the like button. Keep it here on the National Football Show. and Hooters, the perfect